Hi guys and welcome to Car Focus. It's a very damp day here in England, very miserable. I've got a cold but I thought I'd come out in the RS and for the first time I'd do a proper review on this car. Now I've owned it for just over six months, covered just over 9,000 miles. So I think I'm quite qualified now to, um, to kind of give the car a full review with warts and all and just kind of express what I really do think about this car. Now, this RS is a 2017 17 plate model finished in stealth grey with the optional forged alloy wheels. It's also got the Lux pack, so we've got the tinted windows at the back, electric folding mirrors, parking sensors to the rear. And I've also got the, the nav pack with the 10 Sony speaker sound upgrade as well, with Sync 3. Now all in, this car cost me about £33,000, there or thereabouts. There are other options you can spec to this car as well. There are optional tyres, uh, Cup 2, Michelin Cup 2 tyres. I've got the Michelin Pilot Super Sports. You can also spec the Shell Recaro seats. I chose to go with the standard seats because I think they're more comfortable, they hug you tighter, and just for general day-to-day -day use, they are the better seat. Also adjustable, the shell seats aren't, so that's my reasoning for going with the standard seats. You can also spec a sunroof on this car, if you so wish, and you can also have active city stop, which basically brakes the car for you if you're coming up to an obstruction below 30 miles an hour which you haven't spotted so the car will stop for you to avoid you having that collision. You can also have the winter pack which is a heated steering wheel and heated seats. Anyway, so the review of the Focus RS. Now I've been fortunate enough to review quite a few cars in the Performance Ford range. Um, I've got a Mustang EcoBoost coming up very soon but for now we shall review this car, the Focus RS. So, I don't really need to bore you with too many uh, specs of the car because I'm sure you all already know by now. This car has been around since 2016, since sort of the early 2016. It's been reviewed many a times online, on YouTube, and I think we're all pretty clued up now. It's got roughly around 350 horsepower, four-wheel drive, um, clever rear diff where 70 up to 70% of the power can be transferred to the rear in various drive modes, drift mode for example. Fitted for Brembo brakes, uh, discs all round. And we also have various drive modes. You've got track, sport, drift, and normal. A sports exhaust with an exhaust valve, which pops and crackles on the overrun. So visually, this Focus is pretty much your average Focus with a different front bumper, rear bumper, some side skirts, a big spoiler and some nice 19 inch alloy wheels. Now unlike the Mark II, we have no wide arches here, we have no bonnet vents. It's a little bit more subtle, but it does look aggressive on the road with the extra bits and bobs, the extra bumpers and side skirts. Now this car is all about the powertrain and the four wheel drive system. The grip in this car is absolutely phenomenal. We're on a wet road today, so it's gonna um, enable us to kind of stretch its legs just to kind of test the levels of grip on a wet road. Now, I can assure you the grip levels are very similar to when it's dry. It doesn't really seem to be phased by a wet road. Before we actually get started on uh, how good this car is, because it is really good, I have picked up on a few bad points about this car whilst owning it. Now, the ones that stand out for me are the clutch. The clutch, the travel is too long, in my opinion. Particularly if you want to sort of push on and you want to change through the gears quickly. The travel is, it, you lose a little bit of time in changing gear, waiting for the pedal to come up. My foot is quicker than the pedal is coming up. So it can do with shortening a bit, and it also can do with firming up a little bit. It feels a little bit too soft for my liking, the clutch. It doesn't quite feel as sporty as what it should do. So that's one thing that I don't like about this car. Another thing I don't like about this car is the ride. The ride is firm, a bit too firm in normal mode. I think Ford probably could have maybe changed it so in normal mode it's a bit more bearable. For me on my own, it's not too bad, it's, you know, it's okay. But as soon as my wife sits in the seat there, I get complaints and on long journeys it does get a little bit tiresome. 
with the bumpy ride. Another thing is the steering wheel. It's a bit too big for my liking and it could be a little bit chunkier just to give it a little bit of a sporty sort of feeling. It's, it's basically a standard focus steering wheel with a flat bottom. And the turning circle is pretty dire. I've picked up rattles over time. When I first got this car, there were no rattles at all. However, six months later, there are more rattles appearing. And I'm convinced it's because the car is so firm, it's literally rattling the interior loose. But those rattles and those other issues are soon forgotten about when you get this car where it belongs, on a twisty back road. So the good stuff about this car, because it does far outweigh the bad. Now I'm on a perfect little road, I'm approaching the national speed limit signs, which is always a good sign when you're driving a Focus RS. We're in third gear and we're going to accelerate. And there you go. You get an extra spike and boost at around five, five and a half thousand revs, which gives you a nice little punch. But the car just goes. It does have a little bit of uh, a little bit of torque steer at the top end uh, of boost, which can be a little bit unnerving. But once you get used to it and you expect it, it kind of adds to the drama because the car can be a little bit linear in power delivery. But when you do get a little bit of torque steer, it kind of jazzes things up a little bit. The car isn't the quickest in a straight line, don't get me wrong, but it's got plenty of power to pull you out the corners. And you can feel the power going to the rear as well. Particularly if you turn into a 90 degree bend and power out, you get the back twitching out on you, which is really fun. And the exhaust note as well, popping away during gear changes and when you come off the throttle, it makes you feel like you're in a rally stage. When I said about the back flicking out, if you just have it in sport mode, you do get a bit of uh, ESC intervention, a bit of traction control intervention, and that will allow the back just to slide out a little bit, and then it will flip it back in and just control it for you, which is quite nice if you're not that confident, you know, with disabling all the systems. Whoa. Oh God, this thing is amazing. So we've got a nice S-bend coming up here. So down into fourth, just for this first initial bend here. Into third. Turn in, turns in nice and sharp. It's a little bit damp. Power out the corner. Absolutely fantastic. On the brakes, brakes are really good. turn here, accelerate, just feel the back, just starting to go, this is such good fun, it really is. I mean the grip in this car is phenomenal, it really is phenomenal. You can feel all four wheels just dig in on a bend and you can feel it just sort of hunker down and just pull you round doesn't matter how much you give it in a corner, it just hooks up and goes. It was really impressive. Now the mid-range could be improved upon. I think possibly a remap, maybe the FPM 375 remap by Mountune. It's supposed to kind of improve that area. And that would give you just that more kind of progressive power delivery rather than you kind of getting the extra spike at the end. Yeah, between four and five, it's a little bit flat. That's an area that could be mapped in to make the drive that bit better. 
but a car in standard form, this is brilliant, it really is brilliant. There's no point in getting this car on a, on a straight bit of road, you know, third gear, putting it next to a Type R, having a bit of a play and the Type R wins and then you kind of writing this car off because this car just isn't about that. No wheel spin. It's not about straight line speed. It's about corners, it's about fun, it's about grip. That's just what this car is all about. It's an RS. RS means rally sport. And on a rally stage, you're not going along in a straight line for very long. Ford has lots of parity from the RS brand and they've been doing it for years. And they always seem to nail it. Whatever they put an RS badge on the back of, it's always good fun to drive. day-to-day -day drive mode. So obviously normal mode is the, the subtle mode where you don't need to get as many pops. The throttle response is a bit kind of uh, more subdued, a bit smoother and it's just for normal day-to-day -day driving. Now I use sport mode all the time. As soon as I get into this car it's in sport mode. You get improved throttle response, louder exhaust, And it just makes the car feel much better to drive in anger. And I don't think you need any other mode really. On, on the public road, sport mode is more than sufficient. But the modes, they do actually genuinely make a difference to the driving experience. Now, if I switch it into drift mode, so press the drive mode selector, go across into drift mode, go down into third gear and accelerate, immediately feel the power at the rear of the car it's really strange you can feel the front lift up and the back squat and the back <laughs> even on that corner there the back just starts to come round it's really weird it's really clever <laughs> you can't do that in a front wheel drive car so then we put the car in track mode. So it's scrolled across the racetrack and immediately the thing becomes so bumpy. It's ridiculous. Smooth racetrack, yes. British road, no. But it does feel a lot more flat around the bends. And the diff does become a little bit sportier at the rear. So you can stick it in track mode and just manually put the suspension back into normal. But it, the car feels very eager and it does feel more track focused in track mode. So it does the job. Oh, those pops from the exhaust, they never get boring. I'm not sure anything about this car gets boring to be honest. Another one of this car's party pieces is its launch control. Now, as I said, the car's not the fastest when it's rolling, but off the line, it is rapid. The launch control is really good in this car. So, I've never actually done launch in the wet, so let's have a quick go now. So we're in the wet, pin the throttle, Flat foot shift into second, and it's 70 already. It's phenomenal, it's phenomenal. <laughs> if 
you're watching this video because you want to get a Focus RS and you just want to, or you're ordering one and you just want something to, you know, get you a bit excited, I want this video to do that for you. Because you're in for a real treat when you get yours. quite strange. I like to compare my cars to animals. Dogs. So, let's compare the Focus RS to a dog. If I could compare it to a dog, I would compare it to a Border Collie. My reasoning behind this, they look good. They do the job they're supposed to, to do very well. They do as they're told, but they're a bit scatty, aren't they? Border Collies are a bit scatty. You know, you see them sort of sat by the roadside trying to jump out of cars and things like that, crazy things. That's what this car's like. A Golf R, now that is a Labrador. It's just boring. It's a loyal, you know, it's a loyal dog, but it's a bit boring, it doesn't really have any character. I don't want to offend any Labrador owners because I do love Labradors. But this car is a bit bonkers. So that's how I compare this to a Golf R. Collie versus Labrador. Now the Civic Type R on the other hand, I think that's uh, a pug because it's pretty ugly. I love all dogs though. There we go guys, that's my review of my 2017 Ford Focus RS. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope I've been able to kind of portray how fun and how brilliant this car really is. Um, I've read some negative things about this car online, mainly by people that don't actually own the car, but don't let those put you off because it is brilliant. If you can, uh, you're interested in buying one of these, get yourself down to a Ford dealership and try and get yourselves in their demo car. Um, try and get it out on some twisty roads and just experience the grip um, that this thing has in the bend because it is really, really sensational for a hot hatchback. The drive modes, different personalities that this car's got, it's just amazing and I couldn't be happier with a car. If I ever have doubts about this car, all I have to do is take it out for a drive on a Sunday afternoon and there's a smile on my face and any doubts I have are soon squashed. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. Please um, like and subscribe for more content and I shall hopefully have another video with you guys very soon. So from me and my Focus RS, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.